It's Slam Down South and I'm here with Mill and Colin. How are you doing? Doing great. Doing uh, some uh, awesome shows here in uh, the UK. Do we give you a good reaction whenever you come over? Do, do you think of us as like a good crowd? Yeah, yeah, definitely. We usually have a great time here. Yeah, it's been a while though. We did uh, one festival like uh, three years ago, but apart from that I don't think we've been here for like six years or something. Six years? Yeah, I believe so. That will explain why. When I've spoken to a lot of people and I've said I'm talking to you, a lot of people are like, whoa, that's amazing. And everyone seems quite excited that you're here today. Yeah. So that's nice. Isn't yeah. It? <laughs> yeah, it feels good. Like we got a brand new record out and, and it feels like we're really back, you know. When it came to creating True Brute, why was that the time to do it? Why did you know that you were ready to make the album then? I'm not sure, but we actually, We've been playing a lot of shows uh, ever since our previous album because we did like a first we toured that for like two years and then we did like a 10 year anniversary tour which wasn't meant to be a tour of uh, our album Penbridge Pioneers and that turned out to be like one and a half year long tour and then uh, we did some festivals and uh, a 20 year anniversary yeah a 20 year anniversary festival which we arranged on our own in our hometown which we wanted to be that year's only show but like right after that i guess we started to work on this album and if you add those uh, years together it turns out to be seven years but i, I think yeah. we pretty much set up our minds how we wanted to uh, the next album after machine 15 to sound do you find you're generally always on the same page? Like weirdly, you all know what you want to do, and it all tends to be the same idea between you. Yeah, I, I think so, and especially this time because it felt like we were like looking back on what got us started and which influences were the most important bands for us when we started a band, and and also like this is the first time we make an album which sound like we sound live, so it feels like a really honest album. I think I read somewhere that you wanted the songs to be kind of shorter, just that more traditional, just punk yeah. kind of attitude to it. Exactly. So do you have to change your mindset and think, okay, we're not going to overthink things about production, we're just going to let loose and see what comes out? Yeah, but it's, it's kind of easy though, yeah. because that's how we usually write the songs. But Machine 15, this was like seven years ago, but then we wanted like a really big production and add like horn sections and, and, and you know strings and stuff like that so not horns just strings we had a string section yeah. and, and uh, you know but, but like a big production and we had like it, it didn't feel like that album looking back at that it doesn't feel like us in a way so this time we just wanted to make songs which feels like our own songs which the songs we've been writing you know ever since the day one in a, in a way but no extra fuzz you just just like record them as they are short fast punk rock songs with good melodies you talk about um the last record and how it doesn't really feel like you when you perform songs that maybe you wrote ages ago in a different mindset when you had a different stage of your life when you play that again does it sometimes feel like not right because that's not who you are now yeah yeah of course of course but looking back at yeah of, of course but but then we have like you know the, the old songs which we always play and we kind of trans they don't sound like they do on on the album we kind of transfer them into like a more modern sound i guess but still you know we, we have songs from the very start which we always need to play live because people like those songs and it, it just we don't want to be that band who goes up on stage and just play new material that sucks fans generally don't like that no, do they? No, no, no. we don't want to disappoint but i mean it, it's it's always feels like very natural for us we've been the same guys in the band since the start and uh, i mean every album is a part of us mm. so i mean doesn't feel very strange no no me, exactly except for maybe the ska songs <laughs> yeah. yeah they feel really old exactly <laughs> yeah but this time this is the first time ever we got complaints of why don't you play more new songs that's ever. good yeah that's a really good sign yeah because I think when a band's been established for so long, it's so important that you're still relevant and contemporary and you're not just a nostalgia thing, exactly. isn't it? Yeah. yeah, yeah, totally, totally. And we, you know, we've been doing so many, especially like festivals on just like the old stuff. They, yeah. they, they, they book us, but they want us to, you know, because we're, we are a band that's, you know, a well-known punk rock band and they, they expect us to play old stuff. And I mean, that's fine, but it, that made a little bit more pressure on us to make an album which is you know up to date and, and feels good and you know back in business you know for real again
So yeah. I think you recorded it at a home studio. So no, no, no. We own a real, real uh, your, studio. Yeah. your own studio. So yeah. is that hard to kind of keep yourself motivated and to make sure you have a full day in the studio and you keep on target? Because obviously you could go. Oh, I'm quite tired today. I might yeah. go and rest. Is that hard? Yeah, yeah, it is. It, although, like, it, it's a kind of a big studio and it's you know bands rent the studio with a technician and stuff so we still had you know certain time periods but <clears throat> but of course you know we we were really good you know nine o'clock in the morning doom we're there and, and we, we and we record the whole day and then we like spread it out we started like the end of march yeah and then finished with all all like instruments and stuff till june i think or something yeah that's right and then uh then nicola were doing the vocals in another studio in our hometown though with an, with another guy but and he finished that in October, I think. So, but we uh, we, 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 we had a plan set, yeah. like a schedule, like almost a year before we entered the studio. That this album has to be finished in October. Exactly. And, yeah. And and we <coughs> worked worked out a plan, a schedule for each and every one of us. Yeah. yeah and, and we like since we had a deadline, you know, we really had to work. But of course, it could be like you know, you just come in and you do play a, one riff. Or or one, one solo or something, something, and then go away, and you know, just doesn't have. If you don't have like the time schedule already made up, but it, we were pretty good in the studio, I think. Yeah, I mean, we tried a lot of different recordings, like going away for a month or a month and a half, or record in Stockholm with a producer or, or whatever. Yeah, and we but, recorded but, in Hollywood and stuff like that. So, so, but. Like Matthias, uh, he is a producer. He produces a lot of bands yeah. in the studio, so he like, and he knows exactly how we should sound. So why, why involve a, a you know a third person there? And and uh, since we can do it on our own, so that, that and that also made like a big motivation for us on this album. Like we want to do everything on our own because we can do it and we know exactly how we want to sound. So it was kind of easy to, to keep focus yeah. on, on what you were there to do. Yeah, and that, that's the title, True Brew. It's a true brew of everything. It's quite nice at the end of the project to think we were responsible for everything that yeah. went into this and you can really own it and be proud exactly. of it. Yeah. yeah, and especially when the reviews and the fans liked it so much. I mean, then it's really, then you can really feel proud of it. Definitely. Yeah. And the other thing about having a producer that's not in your circle is you've also got to take on someone else's opinion, but also tell someone if you don't agree with them which can yeah. be tricky at times yeah it is and honestly you're always like a little bit nervous to work with a usually it's also like a you know this boo this guy you know <laughs> and you're like oh okay and now it's just so laid back it's just us you know recording with no no angst at all <laughs> and we recorded like 18 or 19 songs and uh, we did as usual we when we recorded all the songs we invited our best friends and had them listen to all the material and pick what songs they like the most and to get other people's opinions. I was going to ask about that because it's so hard when you're so close to a project yeah. to actually hear what it actually sounds exactly. like. Yeah, yeah and that, that's what's good about having a producer sometimes. I mean, because sometimes you feel like, whoa, this is the best thing we've done. Yeah. And then after a while you're like, whoa, this wasn't actually so good. So then it could be good to have, you know, different ears. But I think we made it this time. Was it sometimes surprising when they picked out a song that you were a bit hmm about and went, this is amazing, or vice versa? Yeah, usually, I mean, we have working titles. Maybe we call a song like the rock song or, or the metal song or whatever. And then when we have our friends listening to it, they don't, what? You're calling this the metal song? Or yeah. Calling this the rock song? <laughs> yeah, exactly. And it's always like, yeah, it's like you said, like we, we have favorite songs and those are not the fans' favorite songs in the end, usually, I guess. But. How do you cope with reviews? Do you now, after so many years in business, just take them on the chin if they maybe say something you don't agree with them or does it still get to you, you know, that's my work? Yeah, it's a tough one, but it, yeah, I know. We, we've never been a band who's got like really, really super great reviews, to be honest, you know. But this time, this time, <laughs> They've been really, really good. Yeah, like we lots of ten out of tens, even, which is amazing. We never had that yeah. great review, yeah. so we're stoked. It's a very <laughs> nice feeling. Yeah, and we don't really look around for reviews. It's, it's if someone stick it 
under your nose. Yeah. And you're, okay, okay. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know, that, that's a mistake people do. I mean, if you're an athlete or whatever, you can't read what people say in social medias or anything like that. It, that messes you up. You need to believe what you do. It's just, yeah. one, it's just one person's <coughs> opinion. So yeah, and it's so easy to sit there, you know, behind your keyboard and write stuff, you know. So, no, you, as an artist or an athlete or whatever, you can't, you can't read that stuff. It's not good for you no. emotionally or mentally. Exactly. We'll see live how the songs are, are, are uh, how the fans like the songs and exactly stuff. Now you're very much about you've got that punk ethic, you DIY, you you take control of the visuals and everything that goes with being in a band. But what bands out there today do you think have that same ethos that are you know championing punk rock in 2015? Whoa, that's a hard one. Do you know? <laughs> Tricky one to end. Like Trash Talk on yeah. this tour, yeah. they, they seem to be one of those bands. They're wild. <laughs> yeah. They're a great band, I love those yeah. guys. Yeah. So at least there's one, that's good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, but you know, it's, it's hard to know what, what, what bands are, how they work. You know, mm. Sometimes band can be totally controlled by one guy or a management or a record label or whatever, or they can do, I mean, not I guess not too many people know that we did everything on our own for this one. They yeah. they might ex well expect that, that somebody was in control of stuff, you know. So, you know, you never know. Along the way, have people tried to kind of rein you and say, we'll take care of that bit? Or have they generally let you just get on with it? Uh, yeah, we, we've actually been doing everything on our own, you know, decision-wise from, from day one because we've been on these record labels where they they uh, they let us do us. they trust us yeah. yeah they nurture that sort of thing exactly yeah. exactly sorry popular man yeah. <laughs> in demand today <laughs> <laughs> so what's the plan for the rest of the year what dates or tours do you have loads of shows yeah we got like 15 festivals this summer in Europe and then uh, we're going to the States I think in September yeah. October more Europe, Europe. South, yeah. South America in November right yeah and then back to Australia again I think too so, so it, it's just it's gonna be for two years constant you know touring how are your family feeling about this are they a bit scared about that prospect nah, nah, that's okay they're used to it they have to be used to it yeah, exactly <laughs> well, thank yeah. you very much for talking to me have a good Thanks. rest of your day thank you thank you, thank you.